London. Sure, it's crowded, and yes, it's often grey, but to me, it's one of the most exciting places to eat. We're on the road again with Kitchen Makers Next 125 to eat our way through Europe's best markets. We've swapped countryside Provence for the cosmopolitan capital, where, if you know where to look, you can find great homegrown produce and groceries from abroad. We're at London's Borough Market, the oldest food market in the city. I'm meeting Ed Smith, whose Borough Market cookbook is full of recipes inspired by the changing seasonal produce and the people who make the market what it is. But first, there's really only one way to start our day. The full English breakfast at the market's oldest cafe, Maria's. I'll get a plate of egg, bacon and bubble. Anything else to add? Sausage? Yeah, yeah, sausage. And sausage. And a sausage. And a tea, also no sugar. Cheers. Thanks. So what have we got here? This feels to me like a market worker's breakfast. Something really hearty. Hearty. Um, Maria's been in the market forever. I think before it was a retail market. So people uh, would be working through the night and they still do. So at the end of their day, you want something hearty. You know, black pudding, beans, great bacon from proper pigs. You've got a little amazing looking sausage there, bubble and squeak. It's going to set you up until at least, I don't know, 10.30. Why is it called bubble and squeak? I have no idea. <laughs> it's not squeaking when I bite into it, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. we'll enjoy it though. So how many years have you been coming to Borough Market for? For the last seven years, I've been uh, writing for the market, working in and around the market, constantly shopping here. Writing a book on the market. Yeah, I mean, that, <laughs> increasingly working in and around the market and shopping here. Um, and I wrote the Borough Market cookbook a couple of years ago. And that comes um, and through with all the market. recipes. Hopefully. Do you think so? Yeah, I think so. And it was interesting for me because when I had visited London previously, I'd come to Borough Market for hot food, you know? So it was only when I started talking to you and actually read the book yeah. that I saw how much fresh produce is actually right. available yeah, yeah. here. It's and still a, mar it's a market as well as a hot food market. Right. So I think our biggest challenge today is actually going to be what not to where have. to stop. Oh, yeah. Because obviously we where can't to stop or what not to have. You can't yeah. have it all. But um, I, I I'm going to show you a few things. <laughs> we'll, we'll have a nice day, I think. I think I'm in safe hands. One thing that's great, I think, about Bray Market is that for all the things, all the staples like cheese, cured meats, butchery, fishmongers, there's a real choice and variety, and you can shop at different stores depending on what you want. But I want to show you a bakery that's actually embedded in the market. <laughs> morning, Matt, how are you? Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, how's it going? Delight to see you. This is Ruby. Nice to meet you. Good morning. Good morning. Fist bumps. <laughs> good. Um, and we wanted to have a good chat about your bread. Yeah, I mean we keep it simple at Bread Ahead. We don't we don't sort of try and overcomplicate things. Yeah. Life is complicated enough and all that. That so is true. Good wholemeal sourdough, good white sourdough, a nice tin, a chia batter, and a load of sweet stuff. How like, did you end up a baker yourself? I just like bread, really. I like yeah. it. And I, I like making stuff. You know, that's the thing, it's really Bread is very physical. It's really tactile. And I, I really like making things. And then of course you've got the famous donuts which we're going to go inside. Yeah, the donut thing, you know. So now they are ready to be piped. What you want to look at here is they're not go in the end. You pipe and you see it expand. Swelling, yeah. yeah, now that's that's when you know time to come out, boom, and away. So a nice little rosette on top, like that. Yeah. Yeah, this is the balanced breakfast I'm after. I'm gonna go for a classic raspberry jam. All right. I haven't had the caramel honeycomb for a long time, so I'm gonna have that. The full experience. The way I like to eat one of these, yeah. you go from the top. Nah. Absolutely. And like you know, buy as good as you can, less often. And then you'll enjoy it more, of course. It's a well, treat and it's... For like ethical reasons, for climate reasons, and for like for the taste. Yeah. Um, and uh, it can't be much better than going to someone whose family the farmers for the meat that comes to their butcher store. So you've got the full circle right there. Exactly. In Northfields, for example, farm in Rutland, mm -hmm. and they bring the meat here, and they have rare breed beef, uh, heritage breed, not sheep. Which you're going to learn a little bit about exactly. there. Don, right? we're going to have a chat now, mm -hmm. is uh, the brother does the butchery yeah. and uh, we can have a chat with him now and see what he's got. Okay, can't wait to meet him. Great. <laughs> hey, 
Hey Tom. Morning. How are you? Good to see you guys. And you? This is Ruby. Morning. Hi, Dominic. Nice to meet you. So this is who I was telling you about. Um, Dom's family have been here for uh, since retail started, right? Yeah, years. since uh, since the borough market opened, yeah. which is about just over 20 years. Yeah, yeah. Selling beef that you farm yourself? Uh, it started out um, with uh, my dad, really, um, selling uh, the sort of rare breeds of uh, beef, lamb and pork that we uh, were raising on the farm. We needed an outlet to... Uh, to sell that, yeah. so he came down here and uh, set up shop, and we've sort of never looked back since, really. What's rare breed? The definition back then of what rare breeds are and what they what it meant was uh, less industrial breeds, that, in our opinion, much better breeds, slower growing, and tastier, tastier. What kind of cuts do you encourage your customers to try out? I don't think there's any cut in particular, but I think it's just the, the nature of trying new things. What could we buy? today. What's this? Well, this that I'm working on right now, um, that's the Anglais. How do you recommend cooking it? What are your so, tips there? Traditionally in this country, uh, it would be used for like pies, so it would be really pie. slow cooked in that, that sort of circumstance. But nowadays, uh, it's getting a lot more popular and this is sort of something that the French have been doing for years, uh, just treating it as a steak. Yeah. Um, but in that case, you've got, to, uh, you've got to make sure that it's prepared properly. So what I'm doing is I'm just separating uh, any of the gristle that's mm -hmm. attached here. When you leave that kind of gristle on, it'll sort of just tighten up and be be really chewy. So we take that off, and then you can you can cook it in a in a piece like that where it's Ooh. thick. But a lot of the time, we'll we'll butterfly it open so it's flat, and that way you can just flash fry it super quickly. And the flash frying because you definitely don't want to toughen that up. No, yeah, right, exactly. But you are. Uh, you don't really want to go any longer than sort of a minute or so yeah. aside. I'm really looking forward to the recipe. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. Mm. Uh, well, we'll take that, and honestly, we'll take yeah, the other side of it as well. That'd be great. Lovely. Thank you. Looking forward to take that one into the kitchen? Yeah, cool. Oh, there's so many kinds of apples here. Yes, yeah, these, uh, this grocer's is Chegworth, um, grow their own. Um, and there's a bunch of different varieties, particularly now because it's apple season. Right. They're a good example of seasonal British food. Yeah. Um, and how the colours of the market change as the green grocers change their produce. Um, it's not like quarterly. Yeah. It's not spring, summer, autumn, winter. It changes every week. So then there's some, some tomatoes here. Um, get into wild mushrooms. I love these. It's kind of like. I like walking around the grocers because it just provides inspiration. You yeah. can start with the vegetables and see what's in front of you. Um, you can do your whole vegetable shop here, do essentially. Your vegetable shop. It's like seasonal speciality ingredients, um, the basics as well potatoes, carrots, sprouts. So, just onions. because we're in like a big city market doesn't yeah. mean that you can't do your regular vegetable shop. This is shop like here. an amazing place to come and get your groceries. If you live in central London or if you're here for the weekend, um, you can get your basics, you get your speciality stuff all in one shop. It's, it's just a different way of buying it and you can interact and you can pick one thing that's not covered in, right. in, in our supermarkets. It's like you have to buy three peppers at once, they're all wrapped in, in cellophane. Yeah, no packaging here, which is... If you want to buy one chilli, you can buy one chilli. Yeah. With 150 stalls, there's something for everyone. On our tasting menu, it was English-style feta, one of the many cheesemongers, rows of raw honey from all over Europe, Greek olive heaven, to finding a little slice of Calabria. And like everything else, eating that too. It's a spreadable sausage. We call it uh, spreadable salami. spicy salami. Got it. The best. It's made with salt pork, Chili yeah. and salt and spice. And time. Completely organic. Yeah. And made in Calabria. And made in Important. Calabria with Calabrian pigs. Can we taste a bit? Of course, come on. Really? <laughs> it's spicy at the end. Okay. Okay, I'm going for It's kind of sweet as well as the yeah. spice coming. The tick you get like a tickle down the throat. It's in the throat, yes. yes. Um, How do you eat it in Calabria? Because in, in England now everyone's like, oh you can do these crazy recipes with them, do you? But I feel I like know, you're gonna say it's spread it on bread and do nothing else. But yeah, exactly. You just toast a bit of bread mm -hmm. as a bruschetta and then you spread on top. Yeah. yeah. So there are like three distinct parts of the market, three crown square with all its tributary roads back there, kind of permanent stalls and right. some semi-permanent too. Uh, there's a hot food section called Borough Market Kitchen. 
And then in here is uh, Green yes, Market, which um, kind of changes daily with its lookout with lots of transient uh, trolleys and um, some new places, some old places. So every kind places. of corner's got its own character. Yeah, it's definitely a character. And here there's a couple of like quite new uh, stores that I wanted to show you. One of them's called Eastern Alive, Great. which sells kimchi and hot sauces. And I thought it'd be a really good idea to go Ooh, and taste them. Bit of spice. Exactly. So this is Eaton Alive, who we're going to go and see uh, behind the scenes in their place in Battersea. And they do kimchi and hot sauce. Yes, we do. Oh, right. A variety of hot sauces, kimchi and krauts. Okay. Uh, do you like to try any? I would love to try yes. something. The most popular that we have is classic spice and kimchi. Yeah. Yep. Lucky do. Do you like spice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yeah. into spice. Is that the spicy one? That's the spiciest one. And what are the ways that you like using? With breakfast eggs, mm -hmm. delicious. You're all about eggs. Love eggs. Um, you can make a butter with it. Okay. Can we try one of the hot sauces? Yes. And um, these are all made locally in London too. In right. Battersea, right. yeah. The two That's chefs. Go. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. You're gonna visit. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Keep going, see. That's <laughs> for you. So much more um, dimension to a fermented like hot sauce than yeah. tomato ketchup. Mm -hmm. I think we should get some kimchi. Yes. Yeah. The classic spicy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. My passages are cleared. At any given hour, there's something happening at the market. While it trades during the day and long after it closes, there are bars and restaurants on the site that show off some of the best of London's food scene. Like Floor, where you can taste the results of the British food revival for yourself. Um, and I wanted to bring you up here to Floor for a bit of a pause. A well earned so, one. Yeah, I'm really excited to eat our anchovy and lardo toast, which I think is, is a good example of bake the bread in house. You get the best anchovies um, from Europe and then some British lardo on top of that. And I think that is quite similar to the market itself, isn't it? We've seen like the bakers, um, people who make cheese, people who import cheese, um, and then people who get other ingredients from whether it's within the London area or like across the world. So 20 years ago, the market changed from being a wholesale space to a retail one. And I read it in the book. <laughs> Who wrote that? Um, I think that sort of like times really nicely actually with Britain's food revolution. People getting more interested in food. It's really great that that's happening around Britain and that it's reflected and part of the borough market story as well. And that's so much a part of London's identity as well, isn't it? Cosmopolitan. Like yeah. it's People from all over. I think borough markets kind of different things to different people. So I think it's always like a source of fun and um, of community and of people having a good time eating good food. Yes, see the evidence right, right here. Also going to finish this toast. Beyond the good times and the good food, Bara is there for ideas. There are ideas that come from the weekly changing ingredients and ideas straight from the people who know the products best. But it also shows us how we can shop differently in our cities. Stay tuned for part two when we'll be back in one of our next 125 kitchens with Ed, cooking up a recipe inspired by the market. But for now, I propose a toast of sorts. <laughs>